Hi, Leo. Welcome to your January 2018 astro update. It's Raina here. And so, Leo, some months when I'm doing these readings, there are a lots, there are lots of different transits in different signs. And so the message is much more diffused because there are, there are different things going on. This month, there is a very clear cut down to business vibe for you because Capricorn, which already is a down to, to earth business vibe is your sixth house. So that kind of exacerbates those tendencies or enhances, I should say. And there's a lot of Capricorn energy in terms of, um, the slower moving planets, Saturn has recently gone into Capricorn. And so it's in that sixth house. In addition, Pluto has now been in your sixth house for 10 years with another five to go. So we got those two. Now we're looking at some of the inner planets like um, Mercury going into Capricorn on the 11th. And of course, the sun is there. We're also having a new moon on the 16th, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The point I'm trying to make is that health, your workplace, your the, the actual work that you're doing or your daily schedule are all coming into play in January or enhanced, let's put it that way. Now, just briefly, I want to talk about Saturn going into your sixth house, because this is important since you already have Pluto there. You may have noticed, Leo, in the past 10 years with Pluto in your sixth house that you just can't do what you used to do. Now, uh, a lot of people find that as they get older, they, they can't get away with uh, bad habits as easily as they used to. But this is, this could be no matter what your age is, because Pluto is a regenerative influence. It's, it's very, um, purging. So in the sixth house, it can indicate like you can eat food and where in the past you would tolerate it. Now you see the results right away. I don't know how it, I'm curious if it's manifested that way for anybody. But there's a, there's a real pull towards purification. And then with Saturn going into this sector as well, it's going to give you discipline to be able to do this because, you know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, right? Uh, it's not as easy as it seems, even if you know it's good for you to eat certain foods to, engage in certain exercises, you may still kind of resist it, especially as a fixed sign. You may be kind of set in your ways, stuck in a rut, and it takes that little nudge to get you to do it. So um, I definitely would recommend that people with Saturn in the sixth house eat uh, as, as clean a diet as you can and also to make sure to do exercises that really fit into your lifestyle. Because with the sixth house, it's all about your schedule, like what is organic for your flow for the day. So if you're trying to run a marathon or train for a marathon and you really don't like running and you really don't have, it's like it really cuts into your day in some way, that may not be the best choice of exercise. But anything that you can do, even if it's on the simple side, like walking, I mean, you know, that costs no money, it's low impact, and it can improve your health. So something as simple as that, uh, walking to the, to the stores, hauling your groceries by, you know, by hand instead of driving in a car, Anything, because that because the sixth house is ruled by Virgo, and Virgo likes simplicity and being down to earth. So anything that you can do that's natural, that is not, you know, that doesn't take a lot of um, song and dance to accomplish, that will probably be more successful for you in the next few years. 
And the, the reason I say this is because Saturn does have this reputation of bearing down on people and creating, you know, that sense of challenge if you don't toe the line. So it's not like a, you know, I'm trying to say anything like a warning or ominous, but it's just, it's good anyway, because you're really taking care of business and you have this assistance. It's like a personal assistant who's keeping you on your um, schedule, whatever it is that you're doing. And this goes for everything in your life. And you can make your work life so much more efficient or your daily life, because even if you work a nine to five job, you may have other aspirations. And like you may harbor, you may have a dream to have your own business and you're working a nine to five job and you can't see how you have the time to even think about starting anything like that. Well, with Saturn in this sector, you will find the time and you will arrange your life in a way that is has maximum impact and is really keeping you productive. So that's happening, but let's start with the first of the month. We're having a, a, a super moon in Cancer. 11 degrees, again, that master number that deals with the spiritual path. Some people are having it on the second. So we'll say the first and second. Okay. But the beginning of the year. Okay. And um, for you, this is in your 12th house. So it's a very interesting month for Leo because you have a total lunar eclipse in your sign, another full moon at the end of the month, bookending this particular uh, month of January, the first month of the year. So I think that there's some closure that's coming in for you at the very beginning of the year, Leo. And this can be something inside of you. It may not involve another person. It may have to do with a certain habit that you've had that has been keeping you back or because the 12th house can be addictions and full moons can be, bring endings. It can be, maybe it's like a twin flame situation if it does involve somebody else or a past life, a karmic relationship. And you may see the light, you know, the light of the moon. You may see the light, secrets could be revealed in some fashion, but it's more like unearthing things about yourself that you kind of kept hidden about yourself and realizing, wow, you know, this is something that I never understood about myself, this pattern. It could be a destructive pattern and you're able to heal. It's kind of a very healing situation for you in a, in a subtle way. So, um, by the way, because it's, it's forming an opposition with your sixth house, where I told you, you have Saturn and Pluto, you may also, if you've had any kind of physical ailments, you may see the connection to your psyche, to your past lives, where something has happened. As a matter of fact, there's been at least one, at least one, um, of these, uh, hypnotic, regressors. And usually they're like psychiatrists. Brian Weiss or Weiss is a famous one. Uh, the other one is Michael Newton, but I don't know if he's actually in um, any kind of psych psychology. But both of these men were, were um, regressing people in order to get to their physical ailments in this lifetime. And it turned out that their patients were talking about things that happened 3000 years ago. And they were able to see how past lives still impact us, even physically. So this could be something that happens to you. Now, I, by the way, I recommend this book by, um, by Michael Newton called, um, Journey of Souls. If you haven't read that, it's fascinating. He came out with a, one after that that's good too, but that first one I really think is unbelievable. Okay, so what else? 
the very next day, Aries, uh, Uranus goes direct at 24 Aries. Okay, so for you, this is your ninth house of the higher mind. You've had Uranus in this sector for several years. It's going to be uh, dipping into your 10th house and then going back into your ninth uh, during 2018 and then fully in your 10th next year. But when it's in your ninth house, it has possibly given some Leos some unusual ideas about life itself. And you may have even explored some unusual religious, spiritual organizations in the past, whatever, however many years, six years or so. Um, it can also mean that some of you have traveled to very unusual foreign places. Uranus is all about things that are very different and it has this unpredictable energy. So one thing about it being in the ninth house, if you're a writer and you have published, maybe self-published, you could see your novel taking off, going viral, uh, out of the blue, seemingly out of the blue. And that can be very exciting for somebody who maybe you gave up on a writing project and all of a sudden it just like catches on, catches fire, catches on fire. So that could be very exciting for some of you. Um, but definitely you're thinking about things in a completely different way and maybe like a very nonconformist type of a way about life. Cause this is your philosophical framework. Mercury is going into your sixth house on the 11th, and that will put your mind on diet and things of that nature. Um, but before that, it's going to be in Sagittarius in your fifth house. I was, when I was looking at some of these transits, I was wondering if any of you have possibly had a situation of an affair in the workplace. Okay, because you had Mercury go retrograde in the fifth house. And so this is the house of love, the house that you rule in the universal chart. And that could be like the, the discussion with your lover sort of went AWOL. But I see here that you have, for ha the first half of the month, Venus in the sixth house of the workplace. And then it goes into your seventh house for the last half of the month on the 17th in Aquarius. So we did have a lunar eclipse last, you know, um, what was it, August, early August, August 7th in the seventh house. So some, some of you may have um, gotten separated from your spouse and it could have had something to do with someone at work. And now you may be get reuniting with that, with your spouse, because then Venus goes into your seventh house for the, which is committed partnership for the last half of the month. And, and Venus can bring harmony or restore harmony to a situation. So I, I really thought that because I, I noticed the, trajectory of uh of mercury in in the month of who you're talking to fifth sixth and then the seventh house it goes into that seventh house on the 31st the same day that you have a lunar eclipse so you may have you may learn a few things about yourself this month leo maybe you haven't done the right thing at all times um and you're copying uh you know copying to it. On the 16th, there is a new moon in the uh, sixth house of work, workplace and health. Good for implementing new um, health routines. 
But again, there could be a new day at the workplace. Maybe you have changed uh, departments to get away from somebody so that you're not tempted. Because the very next day is when Venus goes into that seventh house. Like, um, you know, you change your your workplace and then or department and then the next day your marriage is back on track. On the 26th, Mars goes into Sagittarius. I think this is going to be a relief for everybody. I think it's going to lighten up everything. Of course, Jupiter is now in Scorpio, and that is your fourth house of home and family. And, and Mars will be in this sector as well until the 26th. So Mars can, you know, the fourth house is home and family. Mars can sometimes upset the apple cart and create conflict in this area uh, with your family of origin, in your current uh, relationships. So like I'm saying, if your home life has been kind of um, split apart by some kind of affair on your part, um, this could be residual effects of that where there's still like some conflict uh, for the first few weeks. But with Jupiter there, this could mean that you are expanding your house in some way, getting, you know, building an addition maybe. Uh, Jupiter tends to expand the area. So this is in the home sector. So even if Mars threatens disharmony in your, on the home front, Jupiter is there and Jupiter is kind of like your guardian angel. And so it may mitigate some of that kind of um, upheaval or, or it's not really upheaval, but just conflict. And then on the 31st, a very important uh, time for you because it's a total lunar eclipse at 11 degrees of Leo, blue moon, your first house of self. This could totally have something to do with those Leos who are trying to change their physique. The first house is the body. You may have decided that you need to totally give up a certain lifestyle in order to sculpt your body, and get it the way you want it. This could just have to do with a lot of things that you have been up to lately, that you need a total overhaul in your life. And it will come to you whether you want it or not. If Even if you cling to the known quantity, uh, the lunar eclipse will take away from you things that are no longer serving you. So it's always good to be the, the captain of the ship instead of the ship um, being pulled along by a hurricane. <laughs> That's the best way I can, can put it. Because then you decide what you're going to change. And yeah, it looks like changes on the menu for Leo's in January. But I call it transformation because it's really for the, for the best, Okay, Leo, um, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you'd like a private reading, I'm promoting my natal chart interpretations, which are similar to what you see here. Um, but, I'm, you know, I'm analyzing also your basic nature and, um, and looking at some of the highlights of 2018 in different areas for you. Click on the link below, please, for that. My website is rainamoonastrology.com. Take care. Bye.